Good morning. It's um, Wednesday, July 7th, 2010. My name is Jim Mayola, and we're at the North Carroll Senior Center, and it's my pleasure to be interviewing Mr. Mike Bixler, a good friend of mine. How are you doing today, Mike? I'm doing fine. How are good. you, Jim? I am great. Um, Mike, you didn't start out in Carroll County, did you? You started out somewhere else. Uh, yes. I lived in Cumberland, Maryland okay. until I was 11 years old. Okay. My father worked for the telephone company okay. and his job transferred him down to Westminster mm -hmm. and which was coincidental because he had grown up in Westminster. His no parents lived in Westminster. No kidding. Okay. Now what year were you born? I was born in 1945. 1945, so how old are you? Right now I'm 64, soon to be 65. That magic age. Okay, fantastic, Mike. So, what was it like to grow up in the late 40s, early 50s in um, Cumberland, Maryland? This is right after World War II, and so you were a young man. Um, what was it like being well, in Cumberland? Well, um, it was interesting because I lived in what I call the city, mm -hmm. um, so it was very easy to get around back in that day and age. My parents weren't, weren't worried about me getting kidnapped. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a bicycle that I could get around Cumberland on, mm -hmm. and Mom would say, okay, just make sure you're home in time for supper, right. that type of thing. Okay. And we would get down to some of the local grocery stores and read the comic books. We mm -hmm. could sit there, and the uh, owners wouldn't chase you out of there. Mm -hmm. They'd allow you to do that. It was a different world, wasn't it? Different world, yeah. yes. Kind of a slower pace. Yeah. But very easy to get around because yeah. I lived in the city. Yeah. It wasn't a rural area. So you had a bicycle. Yes. What did you guys do for uh, entertainment? What kinds of things did you do? Well, um, one of the big treats for me at the time was that uh, they had a, in a suburb of Cumberland called LaVale, they had a frozen custard place. So on Saturday evenings, my father would take us out in the car mm -hmm. for frozen custard. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things. The summertime, I lived right across the street basically from the elementary school where I went to school, and the summertime they had crafts that you could do, uh, organized uh, crafts that they had teachers at and so forth. At there. the school? At the school, yeah. so that was an activity too. And we played sports, you know, a lot of neighborhood mm -hmm. young guys my age that lived in the neighborhood, and yeah. we'd get together for pickup baseball mm -hmm. games, football games, basketball, what have sure. you. fantastic. Okay, then at the age of 11, now at 11 you were probably, well you were in going into 6th grade I guess. I was I was in 6th grade when we moved down here, mm -hmm. it was right before Halloween. Okay, so you started your, your education though in Cumberland, so you yes. went 1 through 5 in Cumberland. What was that like? Uh, very enjoyable, mm -hmm. very enjoyable uh, because I could, you know, I made friends and I could walk or ride my bike to their mm -hmm. house and vice yeah. versa. And, uh, you stayed with the same group of guys for the first five years. Yes, yeah. yes. And then you came down to Westminster and had to make a whole bunch of new friends. Right. Tell me about that. Well, that was a little bit rough for me because at the time where we moved, I considered a rural area because mm -hmm. it was two miles outside of Westminster, okay. um, yeah. definitely too far to walk. Mm -hmm. I would have to ride my bicycle and go past some houses that had dogs that liked, liked to chase me. Mm -hmm. um, and the friends that I had were starting to make in school lived pretty far from where I lived, right. so it wasn't like the easy walk or bicycle ride to their house like mm -hmm. it had been in Cumberland. Mm -hmm. So you went from being a city boy to a country boy. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, you, what school did you go to? When I came down to Westminster, I went to Westminster Elementary School, mm -hmm. which ended up being the same building that I retired from. No kidding. So that's the building, that's the school that w that's across from the government center? Yes, Carroll County. Government. From the Carroll County Government Center. So that's um, where the Business and Employment Resource Center is Exactly. Now. Isn't it a small world? It's a small world. Now, Mike, you mentioned earlier, when we were, before we started our interview, that you had a connection with your family to Westminster. What was that about? Well, my grandparents lived in Westminster. Mm -hmm. Now, another interesting connection was that when I started working for the state of Maryland for the job service, right. uh, we were located on the corner of Liberty and Green Street. Okay. And diagonally across the corner from our building was a the former location of William F. Myers's Meat Packers. Okay. William F. Myers's 
William F. Myers, coincidentally enough, happened to be my great grandfather. Amazing. My he was my grandmother's mm -hmm. father, mm -hmm. and uh, so that you know, what are the odds that you could go full circle like right. that in life? Okay, before we start talking about your uh, career with the state of Maryland, let's talk about other employment that you had. Now, you went to grade school in Westminster, then high school? Yes. Westminster High Westminster School? Westminster High School. Okay, and is that the school that they have now, or is, was it the old school? It, I went to the old school, okay. graduated from the old school. Mm -hmm. And any excitement, any, any stories about that that you could think of? Uh, well, w one story about Westminster High School that I thought was interesting was that uh, we used to call our class rings cigar bands because they really weren't too fancy. Okay. My father, who had graduated from Westminster High School at a different location, mm -hmm. had one and graduated in 1936, and I graduated in 1963. So our rings looked pretty identical, except it was the, the six and the three on mine and the three and the six oh, on amazing. his. Yeah. I always thought that was kind of mm -hmm. interesting. But um, one of the rewards that I got for moving where we did was that even though it was in a rural area, we were basically located behind one of the landmark businesses in Westminster called Hoffman's Ice Cream. Oh. So that was, that ended up being a part-time and summer job place for me to work because one of my friends who worked there his sister was married to one of the Huffman brothers who operated Huffman's Ice Cream, no so he kidding. put in a good word for me right. and got me a part-time and summer job there. How old were you? I was 16 years old then. Okay, the working time. at Huffman's. What a great place to work. Why don't you weigh 300 pounds, Mike? Well, that is a good question because everybody that I met that I told I worked in an ice cream place, mm -hmm. they said, oh, I know how that goes. When you work at an ice cream store, you get sick of it. Mm. That's not true at all. I bet. <laughs> I never got tired yeah. of ice cream. Yeah. They made delicious homemade ice cream. Yeah, and Hoffman's is so good. It is. Yeah. It is. Now, so what year would have this have been, Mike? This would have been about 1962. Okay. And in 62, how long had Hoffman's been gone? I know they've been around for a good long while. I think they opened in the late 40s, mm -hmm. early 50s, yeah. because I can remember as a child living in Cumberland, we'd come down to visit my grandmother in, mm -hmm. in Westminster, um, they had an ice cream truck that yeah. rode around ringing right. the bell. and Hoffman's did? Yeah, yes. No kidding. And I so I can remember that, that years from some yeah. years before yeah. we moved down, and that yeah. continued, of course, yeah. after. So Hoffman's was already a treat for you when you came down to visit. It, it was a thriving business before I started working oh, there. Okay. So what, what, what kinds of things did you do at Hoffman's? Okay. Well, back at that time, they actually had a grill that you could make hamburgers, mm -hmm. cheeseburgers, grilled cheese sandwiches. Mm -hmm. So I did that for the customers. Mm -hmm. We made milkshakes, mm -hmm. sundaes, and of course the big item was dipped ice cream cones. Sure. Now, back in that day, the price of an ice cream cone was six cents a dip. No So, kidding. And the, the largest cone was three dips. Right. So for 18 cents, you could get yourself a pretty big ice cream cone. Amazing. Wow. Now, did, did you also ever get involved with the making of the ice cream? I saw them make it, but mm -hmm. I actually didn't do it myself. Yeah, you were out there serving. I did think that that was very interesting, how they made, you know, the oh, variety of flavors, yeah. some of them seasonal, depending mm -hmm. on what time. Because it's a regular production, isn't it? It, it is. It yeah. absolutely is. Now, do they do that down in the basement? They had a back room that they did okay. that in. Yeah, and it's an ongoing process. I mean, they're carting that ice cream out all the time. Yes, yes. Uh, and they run through some ice cream, don't they? Yes, they yeah. absolutely do. Okay. They do. It was it was a treat to see the looks on people's faces when I'd hand them their yeah. nice big ice cream yeah. cone or milkshake, sure. whatever sure. they had yeah. just ordered, because yeah. they enjoyed it. As a 16-year-old, you must have had a lot of friends if you were working in an ice cream shop. Yes, yes. My friend Bill, like I say, he, his... Um, sister was a wife of one of the owners, mm -hmm. so that helped me get a job. Bill yeah. helped me get a job yeah. in there, which proved very interesting. Uh, one particular story that I always felt was very funny was that, and we weren't extremely busy all the time. They, we would have streaks where mm -hmm. we might only have one customer. Sure. So on one particular Sunday, I was filling the soda machine up and my friend Bill was working behind the counter and I mm -hmm. glanced out front, it was May, mm -hmm. um, 
and of course May of the year the people around here don't have much in the way of suntan. Right. And I saw this big white Cadillac pull up with Florida license plates on it. Okay. And out gets this older lady and a beautiful teenage girl who had shorts on, blonde mm -hmm. hair, and this bronze tan. Mm. And I thought, wow. And they came in, <laughs> and I'm still filling the Coke machine, glancing up mm -hmm. front. Yeah. And my friend Bill goes over to wait on him, and I don't hear anything for a little while. And all of a sudden, I hear the grandmother say, young man, would you please get your eyes off my granddaughter and wait on me? And I thought, oh, thank you, Lord, that could have very easily been me. <laughs> That's a great story. Oh, to be 16 again. Yes, 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 because that was definitely a treat because mm -hmm. a lot of the young, beautiful girls from Carroll mm -hmm. County would come sure. in there in the summertime to get ice cream cones also. Absolutely. So how long did this job last? This was your uh, part-time job and a summer job while you were in high school? Yes, yes. Okay. I actually worked there the summer after I graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I didn't know at that time for sure that I was going to go to college. Mm -hmm. But I knew I needed to get a job that could give me more hours. And of course, sure. in the fall of the year, the ice cream business slows down right. somewhat. Yeah. Um, so I left, I believe it was in September mm -hmm. of 1963. Mm -hmm. And actually I stayed in the food industry and yeah. some of the skills I had learned at Huffman's came into play there. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and then I saved up money and decided that the next year I wanted to go to college, how important yes, a college so career was. You did go to college. Yes. Where did you go? I went to the University of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. We commuted. Mm. And, uh, and Bill, the friend of mine who had helped me get the job at Huffman, mm -hmm. He went. He was one of my college schoolmates too. No kidding. Yeah. So you went on to college. What What did you major in? I was majored in business management. Okay. And paid your own way. Yes. Yeah. Can you Do you recall how much it cost to go to college? The, I know this is going to be shocking, but it was two hundred and fifty dollars a semester. For your Basically, classes. my parents helped me with the right. tuition. Right. But I had to buy all of my own textbooks. Right. And I mm. actually thought that that was a very good idea because mm. they wanted me to have an investment in it, sure. a financial investment too. Absolutely. So I did the same thing mm -hmm. for my son and my daughter yeah. when, when they went to college. Right. I paid pretty much for their tuition, the tuition right. but I made sure they paid for their own books. Yeah, that's good because they've got a, a, sh a share and in it. it. And yes, yeah. yes. Two hundred and fifty dollars for tuition per semester. Mike, times have really changed, haven't they? That's for sure. Oh that's my for sure. goodness. So, you got your college degree, and then you were going to conquer the world. What, did you, what happened next? Well, my first job out of college was working for a business called Rowan Controller. Mm -hmm. And I did accounting, cost accounting work there. Mm -hmm. um, so, I wanted to find a job that paid a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, I heard they had a, an opening for cost accountant down at Westinghouse in Sykesville, mm -hmm. and I applied at that applied for that and I also took the state professional career test right now I knew the state test it would be some time before I'd hear from them I knew sure. that wouldn't be a quick mm -hmm. fix so in the meantime I got hired at Westinghouse mm -hmm. and a couple worked there for four months and a, four months later I got a letter in the mail uh, and I had put down on the application for a state job that I would work pretty much anywhere in the state of Maryland. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I got a letter saying that there was an opening in Westminster. And I thought, what are the odds wow. that I live in Westminster and there's an opening in there? So I definitely went in and interviewed for the mm -hmm. job. And the lady who was a manager that interviewed me some years later, she told me, she asked me what I liked about my previous jobs, and I said, mm -hmm. waiting on customers. Mm -hmm. And she told me some years later that that was a big selling point right. of why she hired me because of my uh, liking, you know, mm -hmm. of waiting on the customers right. and enjoying that. Now, what were you doing? You got hired to work for the state of Maryland. What department? Okay, I was in the Maryland Job Service, mm -hmm. and uh, my job duties at that time started off to be interviewing the customers that came in looking for jobs mm -hmm. and it was very rewarding mm -hmm. when you'd give referrals to a person mm -hmm. and three or four days later they call back and say hey that one job that you told me about I got that and I started mm -hmm. next week so Fantastic. that that was very very and it always 
Yeah. It never ceased to be rewarding doing that when I worked for the state of Maryland. How long did you work for the job service? I worked for 40 years for the job service. Years. It changed, changed names over the years, mm -hmm. but it still continued to try to help people with employment. And you worked your way up till you were manager of the office, weren't you? Yes. Before yes. you retired. I bet you helped thousands of people to find employment. Well, the people that work for me <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> towards the end mostly were the ones that were helping in that directly. Sure, no, but, but uh, yes, it, it. And another thing that happened over the years is that I get someone that came back and said, You got me my last job four years ago. And I no have to kidding. think about, Oh, yeah, now I remember right. them. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so lots of rewarding experiences. Absolutely. Yeah. Of course, lo probably lots of frustration too, lots of frustration with any job. But think of how many people you were it, at least partially helped or instrumental with helping their next careers to uh, help them along when they were in between jobs or, or struggling along yes. now. When you first got started, unemployment insurance and job service were combined, weren't they? Correct. The two units worked together. Yes. So if somebody got out of work, they were unemployed, they'd come in for unemployment assistance and then you'd help them to find a job right away. And then later on, unemployment was not connected with the job service anymore because they went to telephone call centers. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So could, do you remember any any special experiences that happened while you were working for the job service? Anything that kind of stands out? Um, well, I know an embarrassing moment one time they would have the lines of people coming mm -hmm. in to file unemployment claims. Sure. and. Uh, one time before I was married, about a year or two before I got married, I was walking back through the building and I happened to look over and see an attractive looking young lady standing mm -hmm. in the line. And I wasn't watching where I was walking, I mm -hmm. was looking over there and I walked into a pole. Well, I didn't realize what I bumped into and I started to say excuse me before <laughs> I realized it was a pole. So I, I remembered that. Mm -hmm. but, that uh, could be embarrassing. It was, it was interesting seeing the people and after I started working for the job service, people who had been there for years started retirements. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, that, that was uh, a little bit disappointing because I had formed a connection and a sure. friendship with them and to see Absolutely. them, but it, I realized that they had earned their retirement and, and were going to really enjoy that. Which, as have, which as have you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. How's it feel to be retired, Mike? It's great. Yeah. My, my wife worked at Random House for 41 years mm -hmm. and she retired a month before I did. Mm -hmm. So we're enjoying retirement and uh, we yes. have an eight-month-old granddaughter who mm -hmm. lives in Charlotte. Yes. And so that takes so some of our time too. You, know, you have the whole future to look ahead. It's really exciting. Mike, you do, on your in your spare time though, you do some other things. You you're an avid bicycler. Yes, I know that. And what got you started in bicycling? Well, um, as I think I had mentioned before, in Carmelin, I had a bicycle and mm -hmm. enjoyed riding my bicycle. Mm -hmm. um, years ago, I was a competitive weightlifter okay. in, in living in Westminster, and um, had a friend who competed also, and he. Uh, he didn't live in Carroll County, but he would call me occasionally and we'd talk about weightlifting or what mm -hmm. have you. So one day he said to me, he said, Mike, he said, you know, this weightlifting doesn't do too much for our cardiovascular system. Right. He said, have you ever thought about bicycling? And I said, well, I used to do it as a kid, but mm -hmm. I haven't done it. He said, you ought to seriously consider that. Mm -hmm. So I, at that time I was living up in Hanover right. and they had a business up there called International Bicycle Shop. Mm -hmm. So. I went over there, saw one of their models. The guy said, take it out in the lot, right. try it out, see what you think. Oh, I was amazed how light bicycles had gotten over the years. Sure. Rode it and mm -hmm. fell back in love with bicycling mm -hmm. immediately. And, and I bought the bicycle. And it was a Panasonic brand. No kidding. So yeah. a couple days later, I called my friend mm -hmm. who had tried to convince me to get back into bicycling. Right. And I said, Ken, guess what? I bought a bicycle. I went over to the mm -hmm. shop and tried it out and he said, well, what brand did you get? I said, Panasonic. And he said, did it come with two speakers? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> but you've been bicycling ever since. It made you feel like a kid again, yes. didn't it? Yes. And, and fortunately, when I started bicycling, I had an odometer and a mm -hmm. speedometer. I could mm -hmm. tell how far I was going, how fast I was going. Right. And I kept a log okay. of how many miles and what my average was every day and have maintained that. I think I'm in my 26th year of bicycling since you've I been, started that. You've been bicycling 
formally now as an adult for 26 years and you've been keeping a log, keeping a record of how many miles you, on an average, how many miles do you do in a year? I do about 4,000. I've done total a total mm. of 101,000 miles. You've done 101,000 miles on a bicycle. That's and w and when my son mm. was 12 years old, I bought him a bicycle, mm. and the bug really bit him too, Good. because he would be home from school for the summer, mm -hmm. And he would go out in the morning and do 20 miles, yeah. and maybe do 20 in the afternoon, and then ride 20 with me in the evening. Wow. And he ended up doing a total of, during that year between 12 and 13 of 5,400 miles in one year. And he, they did a front page article in a Hannah Reeden newspaper mm -hmm. with a picture of him yeah. because of that performance. Wow. Now has he has he kept up with it? Somewhat. Yeah. Uh, he's married now, yeah. and he has a trail bike. He mm -hmm. lives up near the Mid-Maryland Trail, right. the Central Maryland Trail. And, uh, now does he keep a record of all of his miles? As no, like no, he, he used no. to, right. but yeah. doing the trail riding he really doesn't. Mike, 101,000 miles, that's more than around the equator. That's like going around the world. Well, one of the ladies who was a receptionist in our office, job service office, uh, she lived in Westminster, mm -hmm. and uh, so she didn't have too far to drive right. to get to work, right. and didn't use her car for too much else. Mm -hmm. And one year she asked me how many miles I had done on my bike, and right. I told her, and she said, Mike, you have more miles on your bike this past year than I put on my car. <laughs> That's amazing, but it keeps you in good health. It, yes. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it keeps you in good health. Yeah. And I, I'm guessing that you're going to continue bicycling. As long as I can. Yeah. As long as I can. It, it's a good feeling, isn't it? It absolutely yeah. is. Yeah. It's wonderful exercise. Um, I know when I go out, I just feel just like a little kid again. I feel I'm all of a sudden, I'm eight or nine years old all over again. Now, um, where do you do most of your biking? Uh, I live up near the horse farms mm -hmm. in Hanover, mm -hmm. so there are a lot of back roads mm -hmm. that aren't okay. real well traveled by traffic, right. and I have little routes that I do, mm -hmm. and okay. uh, so uh, over the years I've cut back, as I've gotten older, I've cut back somewhat on mm -hmm. my total mm -hmm. distance. I used to do 50 mile rides quite often, in fact sure. I even used to do what they call century rides, 100 mile rides mm -hmm. occasionally. but. Now it's more like 15 to 20 miles, mm -hmm. maybe 25 at a time, yeah. but I are still get the same enjoyment out yeah, of it. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Now are you uh, involved with any uh, associations, bicycle riders or anything Yes, like there's a Hanover Cyclist Bicycle Club. Mm -hmm. In fact, this evening at 7 o'clock we're having our ice, ice cream <laughs> social <laughs> in Hanover. That's we do wonderful. that once a year in the summertime. Yeah. Fantastic. So you're an active member of the Hanover Bikes yes. Association. Yes. And they do other things, don't they? Don't they sponsor, uh, you mentioned the Century, they sponsor Centuries, don't they? Yes, we have two rides? big rides during the year, one in May called the Horse Farm Tour, mm -hmm. and one in uh, Labor Day, the Labor Day Century, which mm -hmm. you can do 100 miles, or you can do less than that, 15, mm -hmm. 25, 50, whatever. Yeah. And it's well attended, you have it's quite a few We riders. used to get three to 400 people yeah. that attend from all over the East mm -hmm. Coast, pretty much, mm -hmm. and a lot of them come back year after year. And that's been going on for a number of years. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think the club started in 70, 1974, mm -hmm. and I think it started very yeah. shortly after that. I've been a member since 1985. Yeah. I live up next to the Union Mills Homestead, and I yes. know when you do your tours, they always part, that's always, I live on Merkel Road, and that's always one of the trails that you guys take. And so I'll see the bicyclers all day long running, running up and down, and those guys are in great shape. It's amazing. But you don't have to do 100 miles, do you, if you want to get involved? No. You could do a, no. a shorter shorter run, and it's a great way to stay in shape, and it's a great way to meet people, isn't it? Yes, yeah. because when I would tell someone I had done 20 miles, they'd go 20 miles, and I told them, I said, you don't realize how easy, mm -hmm. so you might not want to do that your very first ride. Mm -hmm. I said, but it is so easy mm -hmm. to build up to that distance. Sure. Sure. Now, you mentioned mm -hmm. that your son lives on the, did you say the York Heritage Trail? Close to it. Close, Close to, to it. it. Does, so he rides on that trail regularly? Yes, yeah, okay. yes he does. And tell me a little bit about that. What's that all about? Well, that is a trail that uh, I think it ends in Phoenix, Maryland, mm -hmm. down near Baltimore, mm -hmm. uh, the one end, and then the other end is up in York. Mm -hmm. And they're continually making branches from that, and they're going to do one now from York to Hanover, and then eventually from Hanover to Gettysburg. Wow. So really? people can use that for walking. Sure. You know, they, 
and also riding bicycles, mm -hmm. uh, pushing babies in carriages if yeah. they so now, choose to. Now that trail right now goes from York, Pennsylvania to, I guess, to the Mason-Dixon line in It's below the Mason-Dixon, well, right. that, because it, it used to be called the Mid-Maryland okay. Trail. Mm -hmm. Now it's, you know, York Heritage, right. but uh, it's connected all the way down to, I believe the bottom is Phoenix, mm -hmm. Maryland. So it's about 20 miles into Maryland and 20 miles into Pennsylvania. Yes, yes. And is it, it's a dirt trail. Yes. And it used to be a rail line. Correct. Okay. Uh, that, that type yeah. of thing has become quite popular mm -hmm. throughout the country. Yeah. Rails to trails, yeah. they call right. it. Right. Now, um, so it's an unused rail line, so I guess it's safer than riding on the street. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And so what do you have on that trail? You'll get uh, joggers and walkers and bike riders, but no, you don't get any motorcycles or anything no, like that. No, yeah. no motorized. Yeah. And um, it's, I guess it's open mostly during daylight hours. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, now, on that trail up in the Pennsylvania side, there's something unique, isn't it? The Howard Tunnel. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. There's a, like a little, a mini mountain, I guess, and they just dug the trail right yeah. through the, and, the mountain. And what's interesting about that, our bicycle club, of course, our members have done that trail quite often, yeah. and someone took a picture of two of our members coming out of the Howard Tunnel, Right. and we made license plates. No kidding. Uh, I mean, not yeah. with a number, right. on, but just, yeah. you know, because in the state of Pennsylvania, you don't put a license plate on the front of your car just right. on the rear yeah. and sold those license plates and on my wife's car she actually has that plate yeah. on the front as a fundraiser yes yeah. yes fantastic yeah yeah now you talk you, you mentioned that they're talking about doing a an extension of that trail from I understand there's supposed to be an extension from York that goes north for another 10 miles or something that's on I the I think books. there is uh, I'm not yeah. as familiar with that because yeah. that's kind of going away from my house right. in that direction then. but they're talking about one from Hanover, Hanover to, to the trail to what's the status of that is it anywhere has it been done yet it, or they it, they've they've started on that but mm -hmm. it's it's just in its infancy yeah because yeah, it does take a while to those things do to take get, a while you know the permits and what have you that you need but that's great safe exercise for somebody if they wanted to to jog or to walk um, I guess people can walk their animals out there they can yes. get their dogs and and, yes. and walk them or to bicycle and it's extremely no. safe because you don't have any car traffic at all do you no yeah. no no yeah. and now uh, one thing that I'm a big believer in is wearing a bicycle helmet I agree. Because I saw a statistic one time that said 85% of bicycle injuries are head injuries. I believe that. So yeah. I have never really gone out without a helmet, yeah. even if I'm just riding in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Sure. And of course, children are supposed to wear helmets. Yeah. So whenever I see a child that I'll pass on my bicycle yeah. wearing a helmet, yeah. it can be something that looks as old, you know, like a Civil War helmet, yeah. but as long as it's a helmet, yeah. I'll look over at the child and say, nice helmet, yeah. and they look up at me yeah. and yeah. see me, right. an adult, yeah. with a helmet yeah. on, and they'll use, oh, thank yeah. you, you yeah. know, so I want, I want to encourage them mm -hmm. to wear, not just that their father or mother says, you have to wear a helmet, mm -hmm. that, hey, it's the thing to do. And it's cool. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, Mike, you've been around for a good long while. Yes, I have. Um, you've you've uh, been a resident of Westminster for a number of years. You've worked for the state of Maryland for over 40 years, and you've got your, your future and retirement to look forward to. Um, through all that time, what kind of changes have you seen in the county? Uh, well, I guess the big thing is growth. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, another thing that I have seen is with the economy, mm -hmm businesses uh, that maybe had one pr in particular that had 3,000 employees at one time mm -hmm. and now basically isn't even in the county anymore. Right. Uh, so that, that's the downside of it that some of the big employers, it, each little town in Carroll County uh, years ago seemed to have a big for them major employer mm -hmm. and, and a lot of those just aren't there now. Yeah, we had a lot of in industry in the county. Uh, when probably in the '60s, when you first started to recognize what it was yes. about, you mentioned Myers Meatpacking. Not not here anymore. No. Oh. Um, I've talked to other people. They say that there used to be canneries in the fact in in canning canning factories mm -hmm. in the county. There used to be um, shoe factories in the county, and I imagine you even know of some others. Some 
other industries that were here that are no longer here. Yes, yeah. Black & Decker, mm -hmm. tool manufacturer, right. Westinghouse. In mm -hmm. fact, I worked at, for Westinghouse for a small period of time, mm -hmm. as I said before. And even the ones that are here, you take the uh, Random House books, they've really restricted their size from where they were in their heyday. Yes, they, yes. They don't hire nearly as many more and, and I always thought it was kind of neat with Black & Decker. When I was in high school, uh, particularly as a senior, word got around is that if you knew someone that worked at Black & Decker, mm -hmm. just go to work with them the next morning and tell them yes. you want to start there, and yeah. they get you to fill out a form, and you could start the same day. Wow. That it, that, yeah. You know, it wasn't as difficult yeah. obtaining employment well, they had a lot then of work. as it is now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they had a lot of work. So, um, what other changes have you seen, Mike? What other kinds of things have you seen happen? Computerization was, mm -hmm. is the big, yeah. you know, people can get on the computer and look for jobs yeah. Make it as wide or as narrow a search as they choose yeah. to. We've lived in some interesting times, haven't we? Absolutely. When you were a little boy, it wasn't unusual for a family not to have a telephone. Correct. Or if they had a phone, a party line. Yes. You've seen the advent of radio. I mean, radio was there before you were born, but radio was very popular, I imagine. You've seen the advent of television. I bet you didn't have a television when you were a little boy. I didn't. We didn't have a television until we actually moved down to Westminster. Okay. I was 11 years old. Mm -hmm. But I was satisfied. Well, I love television, of course. Mm -hmm. But I was also satisfied to listen to radio programs. They had what kind of programs did you listen? Well, to? they had several detective, Richard Diamond, Private mm -hmm. Eye, Johnny Dollar. Yeah. They had the Lone Ranger mm -hmm. and Sky King. Yeah. So there was quite a bit, and they would. I would listen to high school football games, and sure. I could, you know, people didn't understand it. So, what, isn't that kind of boring? But I could picture what was happening in my head, and that, that helped a lot. So, with the radio, you got to use your imagination. Exactly. With television, they, sh they packaged it. You watched whatever you saw. But did you find your imagination to sometimes be more vivid than what yes. you saw on television? Yes, yeah. absolutely. And you could go in so many different directions with that. Um, so you saw television. What was television like that when you got your first TV? It was a small screen. Yeah. It wasn't a large screen. Of course, they were all in black and white. There wasn't any such thing as color television right. back then. Okay. Um, I don't think they were... I, of course, I didn't buy it, but I don't think they were very expensive, really. Mm -hmm. How many channels? Um, I think at that time, maybe they had four or five channels, it wasn't that many, yeah. it wasn't and anything like now. And they'd start at like 6 o'clock in the morning and end at 11.30 at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't a 24-hour a, a day thing like yeah. it is now. Yeah. Times have changed. So Absolutely. we've seen the advent of television and then color television and seen now high definition and they're talking 3D. We've also seen, as you mentioned, computers and what a dramatic effect that's had on, on our um, culture. Uh, when you talk about computerization, uh, it's like that's a piece of it, but it's there's the other part of it, all the electronics that we have. How many people have cell phones now? And and where are they going with cell phones that can connect to the Internet? And we're all connected yes, now. Yes, yes, because yeah. my daughter sends us a picture of our granddaughter, her daughter, yeah. Every on, day. A, on a daily basis. Sure, sure, yeah. and you get to see what, her grow. Would her... Yeah her outfit is yeah. that most of the time my wife has bought for her. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, isn't that wonderful? You get, you're, you're, you're removed. You're not there with her, so you can't see her every day, but you get to share her growth. See actually, her and smile. And, and see her turn into a character. I mean, she's growing and taking on her own characteristics and becoming her own person. Yes. Which is really wonderful. So the electronics have their place. They're very good. But my question is, when you were a little boy, uh, we had none of those electronics. Now you're a grown man and we have all these electronics. Are we more connected now or were we more connected as a culture then? I guess there's arguments from both sides, yeah. but I, I certainly enjoyed the life that, you know, when I was young. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, yeah. I mean, I, I enjoyed the uh, new things that came along, but did there's you, still did, a value in As it. a youngster, did you know all your neighbors and all the yes, people that lived yes, on your street? Yes, And the, the crime wasn't anything yeah. like right. you see in the, on television was, every day. Was and there juvenile delinquency? Uh, not to my knowledge. Yeah, because <laughs> if you did something wrong, I suspect before you got home, your parents would have known about it. Um, I'll ask you a personal question. Do you know everybody that lives on your street now? 
Not by name. Yeah. I because I'm out on my bike all the sure. time. And if I see yeah. someone, I'll say good you're, morning, you're hi, right. yeah. howdy. But yeah. I I may not know their name. No. So so in that regard, we're not as connected as we used to be. I'm not going to say that we had more time then, but now everybody's working. You know, everybody's so busy and they have so much to do that we don't have we we don't have the time to take to get to know people mm -hmm. like we used to, mm -hmm. which is kind of sad. Mike, um, any other changes you can think of that you've seen in the county? Mm. One thing that jumps into my mind are the uh, movie theaters, and because mm -hmm. I can remember when the Carroll movie theater and mm -hmm. the State movie theater, where I went to see, I can remember seeing High Noon there. And now they were uh, right on what on Main Street. On in Main Westminster. Street in Westminster, yeah. they actually had drive-in movie theaters in Tawny Town and Westminster. Talk and about that a little bit. Um, that was it. Started off basically for me as a family, mm -hmm. where mom and dad would say, "Hey, we're going to the drive-in movie mm -hmm. theater," and you'd go into the concession stand and mm -hmm. get popcorn to yeah. eat during it and so forth, and and you'd have a speaker. Uh, you take off a post and right. put on the side of your on your window. Right. Um, so it was a family family, and you just sat in your car and watched the movie. Yes. Now, double feature usually, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you get to yes. see two movies. Where was the theater? Uh, out near where the current Westminster High School, no the Ridge, kidding. the Ridge Drive-in. Yeah. Right on Route Twenty Seven. Well, Ninety Seven. Between between yeah. uh yeah between Ninety Seven and Thirty Two. No kidding. Wow. Now it's all gone. It's all gone. Yeah. Wow, amazing. That was a different time. It was. A different kind of entertainment, family entertainment, where you could go out and get some fresh air. And you didn't have to run around or anything, but just everybody was there all together watching a movie in their car. Just, just that times have changed. Mike, um, you got a few years on you, and you've seen a lot of people coming up. You've got your own children and now grandchildren. You've helped a lot of people to get their jobs. You've helped them with their careers and to make career decisions. Um, for those people who are just starting out, and I'm thinking about kids, I'm thinking about people that might be watching this video in the future, people 10 years from now, 20 years from now that are watching this, um, what advice would you give somebody just starting off? Somebody, let's say, getting out of high school or getting out of college and getting ready to start their own family or start their own business or get their first job, what, what advice would you I give? I think them? an important thing is goal setting. Mm -hmm. uh, try to figure out what you'd like to do. Mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, I think uh, a good advice is listen to your parents. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, advice because they've been through it. Sure. Uh, they've experienced it. They can they can lead you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, form friendships because mm -hmm. uh, you never know when you may end up working either with or for one of your friends. Absolutely. In, in business. Sure. And those connections are important. A lot of times, lifelong. People say, yeah, people say it's not what you know, it's who you know. And there is something to that. It's making associations mm -hmm. that you carry can be very valuable. Anything else you can think of? Any other advice for somebody getting started off? It's not as easy as it used to be. No. When, you, when you and I started off, I mean, you uh, one income, your father probably provided for the whole family. Exactly. In his income. Nowadays, um, it's all relative. I mean, things seem to be cheaper then. They were cheaper. Um, but it didn't take as much of your income to provide for a family. Now everybody's working, and we have to run as fast as we can to keep up. Any other advice you can give for somebody getting started? Uh, form good practices in terms of you know uh, having a pride in the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you go to work on time, mm -hmm. uh, and, and and try to grow on the job. If you see opportunities for advancements, yes. take advantage of those. Right. So be on time, ask questions, and be reliable. A good work ethic will will get you ahead yes. on a job. Yes, because yeah. it, it is noticed. Absolutely. You might not realize it, but yeah. it is noticed. And over time, it really does make a difference. Well, anything else you can think of to, to tell us? I can't think of anything right now. I think okay. we've covered a lot of area. We've covered a lot of territory, Mike. I really want to thank you for taking the time. It's today been my to pleasure.